Hi viewers, welcome to a brand new episode of the Travel Guide on your favorite channel Rose Ball. Right now I'm in a village called Kuditurai which is close to 40 kilometers from Trivandrum city. So guys, right now we travel from Trivandrum into Tamil Nadu. So let's explore and see what's in store for us in our today's episode. close to the Sujindra temple. It's a small town called as Mailadi. This is the place where ancient stone sculpting is still in practice. As you can see, we are literally surrounded by different gods and all taking form. So the expert hands, they are using it to craft out, bring out the god that's inside the black stone. It's close to on the way to Kanyakumari. Kanyakumari is close to like 10 kilometers from here. We happen to see this spot. There's a number of small hutments or small scale industries working out, making out sculptures like this one over here. It's almost ready. It's almost ready sculptures. As you can see, everything is being carved into a, from a single stone. Different sculptures, they, right now they are using modern equipments. Earlier it was just chisel and hammer for them. Right now they are using drilling machines and cutting machines to cut the st uh, statues out of the stones. Right now there's a huge statue is being constructed, as you can see. This is yet to be done. This is the initial form. They have drawn out the drawings and all and they have just started to sculpt out the figure. And here you can see the same thing. So the stones, they are cut out using chisel and hammer and recently they are using the cutters and drilling machines for it. Really awesome. They have got completely, this area is completely filled with small hutments that are doing this kind of works. So there's a, another hutment also on the other side. We'll be going there also. ஏது <laughs> 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 ஒரு <laughs> 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 So, as the, the sculptor Shivalingam told me, there are basically two types of stones, like we have male and female category. The stones also have male and female category. It's the sound by which they recognize it. So, that's the female sound that we heard. And right now, this may be the male. This is the male. We can make out the difference. Nala difference here. That's the sound that we heard. That's the male voice and that's the female voice. Like we never know, especially I never knew there are two types of stones itself, male and female stones. And uh, as he told me, it's not the traditional work. He's interested, that's why he came into this field. And a figure like this may take up to one and one and a half months to complete. So that's a rigorous work. Recently they have modern machineries and all, but earlier as I said, it's only chisel and hammer for them. So that's from the town of Mailadi, an awesome place. 
you should come here, visit down and if possible, buy some of the sculptures because you can always use it at, at your home. We move ahead in the town and then we find more shops, more handicrafted shops like we have stone sculpted out for normal daily use. Utensils are, are there, we can see like in our old homes, we can see all these type of things. And then we have the godly figures. Everything is made out of stone over here in Mailatam. And then we move on. There's also, this, this is a stone work. First of all, I thought it's a photo frame, but it's not photo, it's a stone work, see? Really awesome. They have just used chisel, or I don't know whatever machinery they have used, but it's not paint at all. It's carved out of the stone. And then we move ahead, just literally, they have, like you can see, the daily household materials, everything is here. Everything is carved out of stones, even the weights, I guess th these are the weights and all. More handicrafted shops are around us, everything. I don't know. 1,600 rupees for this. Lamp, we can have it. It's 800. It's like we have a big stone lamp over here. It's like one, two, three, four, five. Five layers, you can have it. Basically, they use it for temples and all. It's very aus auspicious in your temple. There's a Ganesha figure, if you look here. It's literally very heavy because it is stone. They have carved it out of stone. See? A very good statue of Ganesha. Anything and everything out of stone is literally over here. It's a Shivalingam also made out of stone. So whenever you are tra uh, traveling to Kanyakumari, make sure you just do a stop over, over here. You need not buy the stuff, but you can experience what's going on. You can experience what can be done out of stone. This is literally heavy artwork. If possible, try to buy it for yourself, for your homes. I am very sure you will like it once you come down over here. You can spend at least five or 10 minutes. It's not a big tourism place, but still make a stop over, enjoy the handcrafts and move on. We are going to explore a historical importance fort. That's the Vatte Kote. It's very close to Kanyakumari. Maybe say around six kilometers from here is the Kanyakumari. So we, are, we will explore the more of Vatte Kote and know about the past and know about the historical importance it holds in our Indian culture. First thing is a pot, it's a water tank. I guess it's a water tank. It looks like a huge pot. It's unique in its design itself because I never seen like this before. We can easily make it. Some water is overflowing outside. The Vatakote fort lies about 18 kilometers east of Nagar Koil in the district of Kanyakumari. The word Vattakotai is derived from the Tamil word Vattam, that means circle. This fort was reconstructed in the 18th century by the Venard king of Travancore. Originally a brick fort, it was strengthened by the Dutch army general De Loy with granite stone and veneer. The British troops in 1809 demolished the major parts of the Travancore lines, leaving the present Vattakotai intact. All the four sides of the inner fortification are provided with sim simple pillared mandaba with flat roof. That's the peculiarity of this fort. It is presumed that this fort was a military base to protect the Kumari port which was a pearl harbour. That's why a lot of pearl in the Kanyakumari we can see. The inner bastion is accessible by a ramp built of granite slabs. It is flanked by a flight of steps to facilitate the transport of cannons. The entire outer veneer of the fort has well-dressed granite blocks. The main entrance has arched decorations on the top uh, depicted in the emblem of uh, Travancore Raja. At the center of the fort, there is a small tank which supplied penelium water for the defense purposes. The fort has a watch room, a restroom and a weapon room. The walls are about 7.62 uh, meters high. 
the depiction of uh, fish design on the ceiling of the mandapa inside the fort led some scholars to trace the origin of the fort to pandya king of the 12th century ad this is one of the most popular tourist destination in tamil nadu itself so let's go in and explore the more of vettai kottai a huge gate entrance made completely out of granite blocks welcomes us there's a jail type of structure over here maybe this is by the archaeology survey of india asi and then we come inside we are greeted on both side small gardens are there wow as soon as we enter there's a big pond over here maybe to conserve water for defense purposes like we read on the block outside so make sure don't walk on the grasses because they are taking very high efforts to maintain the area itself so basically don't walk on the grasses this is the place where they store water so maybe 13th or 14th century still very much intact it seems like the back end of a cannon a huge cannon i'm telling you i can't even see it's so heavy it is just the closing end of the cannon so imagine what will be the weight of the real cannon as a whole so they have placed it securely there's a small camp type of thing a shade to uh, to protect, maybe to provide shade to the soldiers who are was who are were staying over here you can see simple structure simple structure they had just placed one granite stone on top of another to hold it down but yet it looks very awesome because very good ideas and very good architectural skills has been involved in the workmanship of this you can see the ceilings also outside it's very hot but i'm telling you when i'm standing inside i feel the same warmth that i used to feel inside caves or when whenever we are traveling inside caves you see the walls and all completely granite the fish symbol which we were earlier talking about which helped the archaeologists to trace uh, the fort back to the pandya kings is this one the fish symbol because the pandya kings they used fish as a symbol so you can see a small fish over here and a pearl so maybe this is the pearl and fish over here so this one dates long 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 back i don't know how much hundreds of years back but really i am proud to be here touching the same fish which was crafted by an able craftsman so long years before and awesome this is an awesome tourist destination you should be here to feel what i am feeling right now literally to know the rocks you can see like each are single blocks single blocks of rocks has been used and everything is laid down pillar to pillar pillar to pillar and maybe around 8 feet or 9 feet long rocks they have used they have chiseled it out exactly in a rectangle shape and placed it on top of each other really amazing and the pandya symbol the fish symbol is engraved everywhere the pavement that we were talking about we saw in that notice board this is the one that was created especially to carry the cannons on top of the fort so this each slab may be weighing around 1 ton i guess these were laid in a systematic manner very authentic design you can see 
to draw the cannon on top of it i don't know how much power because we just saw the end of the end cap of the cannon it was so heavier for me itself so imagine a huge cannon being drawn up this was the part that was used wow you have to be here to see what i am seeing right now so join me if you can zoom in you can see the coastline completely the windmills over there kudan kulam power plant over there nuclear power plant over there so this fort was a major defense for the pandya kings and later on for the kings who ever ruled this area a huge coastline they can easily guard the coastline from here to block any en enemy entrance into this area especially into kanyakumari so this is where the cannons were brought in to fire cannon balls this is the main fortification of the fort and you can see especially these kind of blocks they are not straight blocks they have carved it out they have given an angle to it so that enemies cannot easily climb on top of it and they can also get a very good aerial view from here so it goes straight from till here and then it goes down i i would advise you not to step on these ones because it's very dangerous if you fall down it's complete rocks down there you can see it's completely rocks down there so take extra precaution not to step on this i just came on top of it to show you i'll go down again especially the government government team they don't want us to be on top of it it's for our own safety extreme end of the vatakote you can see how the arms of the vatakote has been extended into the sea so that it's completely gives you a full view full aerial view of this area within only with this fort they can guard the almost all of the kanyakumari because it covers all of the coastline you can see just around how they have constructed it really an awesome work Whenever you come down over here whenever you see places like this it makes you feel proud to be an indian it makes you feel proud to be belonging to such a rich heritage and such a rich tradition which existed over here such a very good craftsmanship you feel really proud so make sure you come down over here with your kids educate them about our forts about our history and culture and everything so I hope this one develops into a major tourism destination.
This was the journey. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. I am telling you again and again, do visit all the tourist destinations that we are showing you on the travel guide because these are the flavors of India. These are the historical importance and background of India. So make sure you come down over here with your family, with your friends and enjoy all of the areas that we are showing. So I am concluding this episode at Vatagote Fort. You have seen, they have maintained it very well. They have taken every effort in maintaining the whole of the fort clean and tidy. So all thanks to the crew who has been keeping this one very much tidy for us and for our next generation. So it's time for me to say bye. See you next week with a more interesting journey. This is your host Giri signing off. Have fun, take care. Love you all.